Ayo, nang omang wa wes aman, montore wes. Wes ayo. November 19th, 2025. With successive seismic tremors, intense ash emissions, and successive pyroclastic flows, Mount Simeru's escalating volcanic activity created a danger zone that expanded within hours along the Besu Koboken Valley in southeastern East Java, simultaneously alerting both local monitoring centers and regional disaster management units. The activity observed on Mount Simeru from the early hours of the morning was first manifested by a dense gray ash column rising from the summit area. Observation point officials reported that the ash column was carried from northwest to north by the wind and that its visible density increased momentarily, confirming that the ash spread had reached a level that could affect surrounding living areas. At the same time, hot cloud flows were detected advancing along the Besu Koboken Valley on the southeast side of the mountain. Observers clearly recorded the speed of these flows, consisting of hot gas, ash, and rock fragments rising from the ground and expanding, and it was announced that the flow distance had advanced for kilometers in a short time. The East Java Regional Disaster Management Agency warned the local population in its first report released during the day stating that pyroclastic flows had reached up to 8.5 kilometers. The agency reminded residents, especially those living in settlements at the bottom of the valley, that they needed to move to safer areas and directed evacuation teams to the field. BPBD's rapid response units reported that elderly and mobility-impaired individuals were evacuated from the area first. During this process, local officials also informed residents living in the side branches of the valley about the possibility of hot cloud flows changing direction. Volcanic activity was not limited to surface visual effects. Seismographs detected amplitudes reaching a maximum of 40 millimeters and vibrations lasting approximately 16 minutes and 40 seconds in successive explosions recorded in the morning. These data were considered an important indicator of rising internal pressure and increased explosion energy at Samaru. Experts stated that such prolonged vibrations signify increased activity within the volcanic structure, thereby raising the likelihood of both ash emissions and the formation of hot clouds recurring. On the same day, the Indonesian Volcanology and Geological Disaster Mitigation Center issued a statement confirming that the danger in the region persists. The agency stated that all activities within a 2.5 kilometer radius of Mount Samiru's crater are completely prohibited, noting that this area is extremely vulnerable to the risk of hot rock fragments being ejected and sudden lava flows. In addition, it was announced that the riverbeds seen along Besuk Kobokan, Besuk Bang, Besuk Kembar, and Besuk Sat were under high threat due to both hot clouds and lahar risk. Additional information included that rainfall, which was effective from time to time in the higher elevations, could increase lahar formation. Volcanic activity was reported at different times throughout the day. In particular, a new hot cloud flow was recorded around 4 p.m., and it was confirmed that this flow reached a distance of 7 kilometers from the summit. During this event, the rising ash column was observed to reach a height of 2,000 meters. This thick gray column spread over a wide area as the wind shifted to the north and northwest. Monitoring points in the region deployed additional equipment to measure the intensity of the ash spread and inform the public about possible skin, respiratory, and transportation problems. Huh? There were also significant developments in ore aviation. The Australian Volcanic Ash Advisory Centre issued a red aviation alert due to the ash column exceeding 16 kilometers in height. According to this alert, 
All activity was completely prohibited in areas closer than 500 meters to the riverbank along Besu Koboken, and flight routes were requested to be rearranged according to the movement of the ash clouds for flight safety. It was emphasized that caution should be exercised, especially in flight corridors close to the area, due to the damage that ash particles could cause to engines. The anxious weight in the region was palpable, both at observation points and among people living in the surrounding area. Mount Sameru has been known for similar powerful eruptions in previous years, and has frequently produced hazardous volcanic flows, affecting a wide area as it shifted between danger levels. Therefore, the local population quickly complied with the instructions of officials, drawing on emergency drills and lessons learned from previous experiences. Evacuated individuals were transported to designated assembly areas and received support according to their needs, while regional teams coordinated their efforts to ensure the process proceeded safely. <laughs> Due to the topographical structure, flows can pass through narrow and fast channels along the valleys, so the risk assessment in the region was constantly updated. Authorities repeatedly emphasized that it was necessary to remain alert, both on the main lines and side branches of the valleys, especially since hot cloud flows can change direction within a short period of time. The activity of Mount Sameru on November 19, 2025, indicated a multi-stage eruption process confirmed by both visual reports and technical measurements. All information from the rise rate of ash columns to the distance traveled by flows, from seismic data to the evacuation of the population, clearly showed that the danger in the area should not be underestimated. While extending our best wishes to the local community, we would like to remind everyone that Mount Sameru's volcanic activity, which has been intermittent for years, is a reality of this geography and that people constantly face these natural risks in their daily lives. We hope that life in the region will return to normal after the effects of the ash and hot clouds created by the latest eruption. Huh? <laughs> If you want to regularly access comprehensive, up-to-date, and verified information about natural disasters, you can follow our channel to stay informed about the latest developments. The content we prepare is for informational purposes only and aims to present significant natural events occurring in different regions in a clear, understandable, and reliable manner thereby contributing to a proper understanding of disaster processes and enabling viewers to see the true scope of events clearly.